So in a human transport system, circulatory system, you've got three things. You've got the blood, you've got a heart, and you've got blood vessels. So the heart. Now the heart is made out of special type of muscle called cardiac muscle. It's uh, different from the muscle you've got, you know, in your arms and your legs. It's different from the muscle you have in your intestines and your guts. This muscle never gets tired. And it pumps blood around the body uh, and up to the lungs by contracting, the heart contracting, which we we'll call systole, and relaxing, which we we'll call diastole. So it contracts and relaxes, contracts and relaxes, and that pumps the blood around the body to the lungs to get oxygen, and then again round the body to provide that oxygen um, and all the other nutrients in the blood to all the cells that need it. It has special valves that ensure that the blood flows in one direction. We don't want the blood flowing backwards uh, the wrong way. Now here's a diagram or a picture of the external anatomy of the heart and you can see a few things here. You can see these two little chambers at the top. These are called the left and the right atrium. It's worth mentioning that the way you label the heart is that this is my heart, that I'm lying on the page or I, you know, I'm on the screen and that is my side is the left side. So it, looks, it might look a bit strange but you've got to think about that being the left side and the other one being the right side. Um, you've got two chambers at the bottom, which are called the left ventricle and the right ventricle. You can also see some big blood vessels coming out of the top of the heart. That one that's going over and curving over is called the aorta, and that one on the other side, just tucked behind it there, is called the vena cava. And then you've got two more here. These are the ones that go up to the lungs and back, and therefore they have the word pulmonary, which is to do with lungs. And you've got the pulmonary artery, which carries blood to the lungs, and the pulmonary vein, which carries blood back from the lungs. You've also got these little arteries that actually supply the heart muscle itself. Very, very important that the actual muscle here gets an oxygen and glucose supply as well. So it's got its own little blood supply running over the surface there, as you can see, which are called the coronary arteries. Now let's go inside the heart and look at the major structures. So the heart has four chambers, as I mentioned. It's got the two at the top, which are called the atrium, and it's got the two at the bottom, which are called the ventricles. It's got four major blood vessels that come out of the top of the heart. You've got the vena cava, which is carrying blood back from the body, deoxygenated blood, that's why it's shown in blue here. So all the blood from your body that's been used drains back into the heart, into the vena cava. The blood that is pumped out of the heart around the body is pumped out via the aorta. And then you've also, like I said, got these ones that go up to the lungs and back. So the pulmonary artery takes blood up to the lungs to get oxygen. And then the blood actually comes back to the heart again in the pulmonary vein before being pumped out of the aorta. Humans have a double circulatory system. There are two loops to it. So every circuit of the body that the blood takes, it actually passes through the heart twice. So the blood goes into the heart, it then goes up to the lungs to get oxygen, back to the heart, and then the heart can pump that oxygenated blood all the way around, and then it comes back to the heart in the vena cava again. You've also got these valves, as I said, which are used to stop the blood flowing back the wrong way through the heart. You've got two in the major uh, arteries that are coming out of the heart there, the pulmonary artery and the aorta, to stop the blood drawing back down when the heart isn't contracting. When it's relaxing, you don't want the blood to flow back down those. And those are called semilunar valves. And then you've between the atria and the ventricle on each side, you've got the bicuspid on the left side and the tricuspid on the right side. A lot of people get them mixed up. The way to remember it is that the tricuspid has an R in its name, tricuspid, and therefore it's on the right-hand side. That's the way I remember it. So I've already mentioned this briefly, uh, how the heart beats, but let's go through the cardiac cycle, which is basically one complete heartbeat. So blood, first of all, enters the atria on both sides. It can't pass down into the ventricles because the tricuspid and the bicuspid valve are shut. So the atria fill up with blood. Then the atria contract and they force that blood down in through the valves, the valves are forced open and the ventricles fill with blood. The heart then contracts from the bottom up, it's called the uh, ventricular systole, as the ventricles contract and squeeze that blood up and out of the arteries. At this point, the tricuspid and bicuspid valve have to shut because you don't want blood going back up the, aor um, back up the atria, we want the blood going up those two blood vessels in the middle there. 
When the ventricles uh, relax, the semilunar valves close to stop the blood flowing back down again, and the atria can start filling with blood again as the heart is relaxed. And so we're back to the beginning of the heartbeat again. Now, when you exercise, your muscles need more oxygen for respiration. So you are also, and you're also producing more carbon dioxide due to the increased respiration. So when you exercise, the heart rate actually increases in order to speed up the delivery of oxygen to the respiring cells and also to remove the extra carbon dioxide. We have sensors in our aorta and in our carotid artery, which is the one that goes up in your neck here, which are actually detecting carbon dioxide levels. So if those carbon dioxide levels go up, um, and the message is sent to the, uh, somewhere called the medulla in the brain, then the medulla can then say, oh, hold on, you're producing a lot more carbon dioxide, we need the heart to beat faster. So it sends a message down an accelerator nerve to the heart to tell it to speed up. Another way to alter the rate of the heart is to use hormones, things like adrenaline. Adrenaline is a hormone that's produced by the adrenal glands in times of stress, and it prepares the body for fight or flight. It prepares you to either to fight off a predator, for example, or to run away uh, as quickly as you can. Now, obviously, in order to do those things, you want your heart rate to really increase. So adrenaline actually increases the heart rate in order to give you, your cells, again, more oxygen for respiration that they're gonna need if they're gonna run away. Something that can go wrong with the heart is something called coronary heart disease. This is when a fatty substance called plaque builds up inside those coronary arteries, the actual arteries that supply the heart itself. It's this process of building up plaque in the arteries is called atherosclerosis, and there's lots of things that cause it. Things like smoking, high cholesterol in your diet, high blood pressure, a family history, a lack of exercise. So it's what we call a multifactorial disease. There's lots of things that contribute to developing coronary heart disease. If it gets really bad and the plaque really uh, builds up, then it might actually block the blood flow. A bit of the plaque might break off and you might actually get a blood clot forming there and the blood clot might completely block that artery and that is what gives you a heart attack. Depending on how high up in the artery it is will depend on maybe how much of the heart is starved of oxygen and how serious that heart attack is.